All right, everybody, we are back with episode 49 of the 580 show. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, yeah, we are coming off our biggest week so far. The podcast has been doing this for almost a year now consistently. And I just want to thank everyone that uh, tuned in for the first time last week, um, followed us, subscribed, sent us a message. Uh, like the post, reshare, anything like that. Thank you guys so much. The response was, I'm, I'll am i be honest, the response was a little bit overwhelming. It was more than I had thought. I really didn't, I really didn't have expectations because Rob and Rod kind of, it was last minute that they were coming on. We kind of found out, I think like maybe 24 hours before at max, but um, it was really fun to sit down with them. And, you know, I just hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys stick around and continue to listen to our podcast. Um, I I just wanted to say I really appreciate all the messages, all the new people that followed, subscribed, like, shared, all that stuff. So thank you guys and welcome back for another episode. So let Froley, let's recap that real quick. Yep. What do you? obviously that episode last week was a pretty big deal for us. We got a pretty big bump on social media. It's been kind of the, it's kind of been the, uh, the growth we've been looking for. So um, what did you, what did you kind of think about the information that Rob and Rod had? Um, So I think it was a lot to take in. Um, Obviously some of the ideas were fantastic. Um, I think everybody can agree to some extent that there needs to be a little bit more exclusivity um, to a national level show Um, that the one thing that I really did like to that we've talked about kind of offline is um, there needs to be an in between for like local shows and and nationals. And there really kind of isn't right now. Like there's a um, you can have big local shows like big shows like um i'm thinking like the platinum pluses specifically in strongman corporation but that's still kind of run as a local show whereas like the regional stuff um the regional opens up that in-between ground where you consistently will have a high level competition um and it gives you more than just like a, a normal like state championship does right now um so I'm looking forward to like the in-between stages because right now you have the local and even the state championships are just kind of local shows too. Um, so it'll kind of funnel like the good strength athletes, let's say the good strong men and women into um, a, a channel that forces them to compete against each other. And I thought that was really cool by design. And like Robin Rod said, like that forces the highest level competitors to get in one spot. So you're forced to get better every year. I agree. Um, I think obviously like now we have these big plans. We have to follow up on them. Obviously I have, I do have, I'm pretty optimistic that they will, but you know, now, now we just have to kind of uh, help them how we can hold them accountable. And and hopefully it it really sends this strongman corporation in the the right direction. Um, I think it's going to be a huge step. I like that. He mentioned like the CrossFit, like, set up state like local state regional nationals um i think rob not rob rob yeah it's hard it's hard with their names but rob had a good point that um people for so long and i'm personally guilty of this do one local show and then they just wait for nationals and they just get real so the thing i thought was super interesting and i thought it was a super good point Probably the best argument I've ever heard that shut me up because I complain when nationals and Dante knows he's complained and Frawley knows he's complained when events aren't posted like six, seven, eight months out from a show. Rob had probably the best point ever for so long. People do a show, a local show, beginning of the year, whatever. And then they just do the events for nationals until nationals. So it's, you're, you're really not getting, and I'm, I'm actually 9.9 times out of 10, probably the best person still wins nationals. So I'm not saying the best person doesn't win nationals. I'm really not saying that, but what I'm saying is people are able to just, I mean, dude, if you practice freaking Hoosville carry, for 
nine months, you're going to get pretty freaking good at Hoosville carries. So having like a local, then a state, then a regionals, then a nationals with all different events at every show, it forces you to get there to be the most well-rounded strongman you can be. And you can't look ahead and, oh, hey, at nationals, there's going to be a log. So I'm just going to do log because regionals to get to nationals may have an axle. So I thought that was literally such a good point. And I kind of was like a good... Uh, reflection period for me, because I know that I've done that before. I've complained that events aren't out ahead of time and stuff like that. And I've also just done the local show and then banked on doing nationals. So So that was something that I didn't even, um, what I want to comprehend. That didn't like process in my mind until I actually was the listener until I listened to the podcast, um, and went, wow, you know, that's actually a really great point. Like exactly what he said that means you're good at five events that doesn't mean you're a good strong man and when you run through the gamut that they have i assume um that you're going to have to do such diverse events exactly like you're describing um that it's going to make you you're going to have to be good at everything if you have one weakness you're you might not make it you know right yeah so. and i like the idea of only a limited people at nationals too just because like for scoring and stuff sure it's going to be a lot better to have a tight competition and it's going to go down to the last event almost every year because there's only going to be 10 total points available at every event versus this year, for example, in my class, there was 32 points available every single event. So if you zero that and the person that wins, they're 32 points up on you, you know, it's going to be almost impossible to catch up. So I thought that was a really good point too. Yeah. Um, um, and I kind of agree with you too on, and this is by no means a dig at Rob and Rod, but um, everybody has great ideas whenever they're starting something new. Like, let's see, let's see how they carry through. Um, let's see what we can do as athletes and competitors um, to try to help that. But the, the ideas are great, but let's see the execution of it. And then the changes, I think if they can truly implement them the way that they have in mind, um, it's going to be awesome for the competitor. So, um, but like you said, we kind of need to hold them accountable. Like, Hey, you guys have these awesome ideas. We need you to carry through with them. So, and I'm, I'm now like, I mean, I guess a lot of people heard it on the episode last week, but I'm now directly affiliated with the organization. So it's on me too. And, and, uh, to help out, help them however I can, especially for this region for strongman, I want to have some big shows here every year in Western PA, Northern West Virginia and Eastern Ohio. Like let's make this the freaking great shows and let's make them bring big shows here and put time, money, uh, great competitors, like at the pro level to come out here. Like let's, let's shine a spotlight on our area and make it like, you know, the re- like the gold mine for strongman in the U S let's make our little pocket awesome. And like undeniable because the people are here for sure. And the desires here. So it's on us, you know, boots on the ground to, to make it happen. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think like, I, I appreciate everyone's feedback, even if it's critical. And I think a lot of people were like, Oh, you guys should ask this. You should ask this or this. One thing is we only had them for less than an hour. Like right. Rob, is doing a press tour rod. I mean, those guys are seriously going and going and going. They work full-time. Like Rob has a full-time job too, on top of being the owner of strongman corporation now too. So just for them to have them for 50 minutes, I mean, we can't ask everything we want. The biggest regret I have is not asking about Arnold's. Uh, That was a huge missed opportunity by myself. I should have asked that. I'm going to ask for some clarification on that too. I was going to say that's something that we can try to follow up with them offline too. And that we can come back to later. Um, e- even if it's next week and say like, Hey, we realize we didn't ask you guys this. How does that affect it? Even if you can't tell us everything, can you tell us something so that we can say, you know, we can kind of put a little bit of information out there for people. So, yeah. um, but I, I had the same, the same blunder. I was like, I can't believe we didn't ask about that, but yeah. And I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm just assuming. So it's not, it's, this is by no means a reflection of what they're actually going to do, but I'm assuming by them not starting until 2023 with all this implementation, they're going to honor all the platinum pluses this year. They're going to honor all the nationals invites just by the local show for this year. It's kind of just 2022. Let's play ball. Right. And then 2023, um, 
you know, memberships going up, uh, you know, we're going to do the state or the local state regional then that that's what I liked about them too. They said clearly, Hey guys, in 2023, we're being honest. There's going to be a price increase. Right. Um, I know talking to Rod, you know, dude, he's, you talk to him, his brain goes a million miles an hour. He has so many ideas. He wants to help. He wants to improve this. And he told me, he, he said, I guarantee you people will not be complaining about the price increase because they're going to get their money back in the first week with some of the cool stuff that they have ideas for what will come with the membership. Because I do agree. Okay. Like Riley, you're a novice level competitor. Like you haven't been doing it forever. You know, you see like, okay. Like if I tell you to do a show, that was a dig. If I tell you, if I tell you to do a show, like a USS show or a strongman, it doesn't matter for you. Right. Because it's just, okay, whatever. I'm just paying for this membership this year. You know, you're not going to get like, it's just literally your ticket to do the show. So like, if they can make like incentive for it's like, okay, like Riley's like thinking, okay, I have this show and this show in mind, but I'm going to do this show because if I have a strongman corporation membership, I get access to this coaching app and I get access to this and this and this, like, that's cool. So giving incentive to be a member of an organization versus just, okay, all you can do is just now you can sign up for a show and compete. I think that's cool. So, and it's, uh, it's only $15 for, from the things that they talked about to the things that you will be getting for $15 a month for having literally expert, expert opinions, expert coaching, like the highest level that you can get for $15 extra a year. Not right. even a month. It's a year. So you're talking a dollar twenty. I don't know. What do the math? A dollar yeah, twenty-five yeah. a year or a month yeah. extra. So yeah, and they haven't announced official pricing. Like I'm sure it might be twenty. You know, whatever. But sure. if they're gonna make it worth it for you, and I know, I think I read on their site that they're gonna do a bundle. So like you can do like a five year membership. Like so you won't have to worry about it for five years if you're gonna plan on being competing you know, for a while and it's going to be like a severe discount too. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like, so for all, do you have anything else you regret or any takeaways from the interview? No, not really anything other than what we talked about. Um, I wish we would ask about the Arnold's. We'll try to get that answer offline. I need, I need to get that answer offline, but, yeah. Yeah. um, but yeah, we'll go from there. So Riley and Dante, you guys. So last week was weird. Dante was in Florida. Um, Riley, we, we kind of knew it was just going to be a sit down interview. So like too many cooks in the kitchen, I think kind of muddies it. So it worked out pretty perfect last week. What did you guys think listening back to the interview and, you know, the sit down? I thought it went pretty well. I mean, as well as you can expect for not being like uh, professional interviewers, you know. Like, it's kind of, I mean, it's not your first time, but it's pretty close to it. So, I mean, I think it went as well. Like, I mean, th- there's obviously things you guys wish you could have done better, but that's always going to happen. So, I think it overall went pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, and honestly, like like you said about the too many cooks in the kitchen, there would have been, like, what, six people in the pot or whatever all thrown talking at the same time. So, I think yep. you and Farley definitely presented yourself very professionally and very, um, you know, promptly. And you guys asked questions and just listened pretty well. And you guys talked like you guys knew them for a while. So it really kept my attention for the long part. And, um, you know, you guys didn't just talk strong. And you guys joked around a little bit, talked about Joe Rogan and other stuff. So it kept my attention more than, you know, like a sit-down interview. So I thought you guys did a really good job. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, I like my biggest, my biggest goal. And I, I want to move on, talk about some other stuff we have this week. But my biggest goal for the interview, I told Frawley, was – before we sat down was I want to treat this. If only strongman competitors, active people who compete in the sport are going to listen to this. What questions would I have? Okay. This is the biggest organization in strongman and they just got bought by two new people. So what questions would I have as a competitor? So I did, you know, we did our best and to ask the blunt, uh, you know, just basic questions that you're going to have in an introductory thing. Obviously I could have stayed on the thing for him for freaking, you know, eight hours. Um, but we did what we could and, and I'm hoping to have him on again. Honestly, I think it would be awesome to have him on again. Yeah. So, 
but uh but yeah we won't let all this new fame go to our head just yet but yeah <laughs> I, I really do appreciate everyone that tuned in and like i i hope we have a carryover from it because we had a bunch of people reach out and say oh we really enjoyed that we're gonna subscribe now we're gonna do that and so hopefully for a rude awakening yeah going from rob and rod back to me and dante uh, this is the best it. cast around they're gonna love it um so moving on i think there's i mean there's so much going on in strongman right now it's hard to just not talk about strongman so i mentioned it i'm officially a state chair for strongman corporation um so i sent it out so we have 30 competitors signed up for battle of the bridge i just want to i just want to be blunt and, and talk about it and uh i already sent out an email to all the competitors about what's going on um i want so this so battle at the bridge is going to be a strongman corporation show. Okay. I don't think it's affected anyone in a negative way because you can't have a membership for the other organization yet until January 1st. So we got ahead of it. Um, I'm offering full refunds for anyone that has an issue with it, that no one doesn't want to compete. Seriously, no questions asked. I get it. It's an unfor it's, we didn't foresee this coming. Um, you know, I didn't for sure. Um, but it's a great opportunity for me to, to be involved in Strongman Corporation. It's a great opportunity for 580 Barbell to run shows, all you guys to be involved in it, and um, just make Strongman great in you know this area. I sound like Donald Trump. But make, <laughs> I, thought but, gonna, but, I thought you were going to go the whole way with it. Please but seriously, I want to I wanna seriously make Strongman like, amazing and make this the freaking – golden the gold mine for strongman area uh, people will say i'm crazy but i i seriously think we can have huge shows here huge shows and i promise you to everyone that's competing at battle of the bridge this show is going to be just fucking huge it's gonna be it's gonna be insane as, as for an amateur local level show you're gonna be treated like a pro you're gonna leave happy if you're and you're gonna come back next year and I, I promise you, we have such a good group of people, everyone on this podcast, plus a million other people. I'm not going to name everyone, but a million people that are going to help us with this show. And these guys on the pod know I'm, I'm not going to, I want to under, I want to, how, how does that saying go? Under promise and over deliver. Yeah. But something, something like that. there's some, there's some awesome stuff that Rob and Rod have told me that they're going to help out with the show. And if it happens, you're going to wish you signed up. If um, it goes the way that it could potentially go, you will want to be in the Pittsburgh area that weekend. Yeah. So that's what that, I'm that let's just say that weekend. Let's yes. not just say this that day. That's all I'll say. Right. But, and it's going to be, I'm I'm so motivated to make this the biggest possible show now. I will like I'm going to die to make it happen. So it's good. Battle at the Bridge, my vision for it, annual show every single year um, in our county. And I want it to be Battle at the Bridge 10, 15. You know, I want it to go on for as long as we possibly can and every year just make it bigger and better. So you know, if you're thinking about signing up, do it. Um, if you're going to drop out, though, I w but let me get back to that. So it obviously got thrown at that. It switched from one organization to another. If you have any questions, if you're a competitor and you haven't checked your email, check it. I sent out a long description. Nobody. I, I just want to I seriously want to make this from the bottom of my heart. Nobody will be screwed over in the transition process of this. When I talked to Rod, when I talked to Rob, I said my biggest concern. My only, really my only concern, I can take shit. People can talk shit on me, whatever. That's fine. I can handle it. I'm just a young, dumb 27 year old, whatever, but I can take it. But I want to make sure every person that was already signed up for this show does not get screwed over in this process. If you want to drop out, drop out. I, I, I promise you, I will not push you. I will not ask you why I will give you, I will give you a refund and say, if you need anything, reach out. Like we're here for everyone and I appreciate everyone that signed up already. I will say when I sent out the email, I got four calls within like eight minutes of sending out the email that they're still on board. They're super appreciative of, of um, how upfront I've been and, and yeah. So thank you guys for sticking with us. If you want to go, that's a hundred percent fine. 
I, I, I really mean that. But I will say no athletes will be forced to do anything. No athletes will be screwed over. And we're going to have a huge, awesome show. And it's going to be an awesome day. So um, what, we're gonna, what we're going to do, we're trying to grow our YouTube, right, boys? Um, we're trying to make Battle at the Bridge the biggest show in the world. So to parlay those two things together, what I'm going to do. So if you go to our YouTube, you got to be, you got to be subscribed and comment on any of our YouTube videos, comment battle at the bridge. Okay. Just comment that battle at the bridge and you can add other stuff. Tell Riley how handsome he is in the videos, whatever you want to do. Um, but if it says battle at the bridge, I will DM you a link or a, not a link. I will DM you a code to sign up for the show and it saves you $15 for this next week. So your original fee, what it says on Iron Podium, you will have your own discount code for, that's active until the 28th. So you got one week from when you're listening to the, if you're listening to this on the first day it drops, but November 28th is the last day. Go, you have to be subscribed. I can check. Make sure you subscribe to the 580 Barbell YouTube channel. Go comment on any of our videos, Battle at the Bridge, and I will DM you a link for $15 off to sign up for the show. So save you some cheddar, helps us get more people on our YouTube, um, and it's just kind of a little appreciation to uh, everyone that's sticking with us or, or wants to get on board to make this show awesome. This show, I will promise you, this show will sell out. This show is going to sell out, and I am not doing a wait list. So when it is sold out, I'm going to give, I'll tell you guys exactly what I'm going to do right now. And then I'm going to shut up and move on. I'm going to, the show is going to sell out. Okay. This is taking one out of my buddy, Paul Mauser's pocket. Okay. This is an old bag. Of, he taught me this. So the show is going to sell out probably before the first of the year. I'm going to post, I am going away for 48 hours. And I'm going to accidentally leave the link open to sign up. So after it's sold out, sold out, I'm going to give 48 hours in addition to after it's sold out and you will have that time to sign up. So if it's capped at 65, then there's going to be a 48 hour grace period after that. After that, it's done. I'm not opening it back up. It's over. It's closed. Sorry. We'll see you in 2023. You're still welcome to come out as a spectator. Um, but that's how it's going to be. So don't, you know, do the thing in March or April. Hey man, can I get in? My buddy's going to drop. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. We have to plan when you, when you have goals like we have for this show and you want to make it freaking huge and you want to give the athletes everything possible and set up a day for them. We, we need as much time as possible. So when it's sold out, it's sold out. So I love you all. And I appreciate you considering about the bridge. I don't think you'll regret it. If you have any issues, call me, text me, DM 580 barbell, get signed up. So go comment on our YouTube, Battle at the Bridge, subscribe, and you'll get 15 bucks off for this week. Probably the only flash sale we're going to do. Do it. That's a callback from the uh, Pig Iron Classic there. I remember I remember that. Oh. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. It worked too. You get like you get like 10 plus people that, that panic and do it. <laughs> That's So Mauser, Mauser, the first ever, or no, second show I did, first open show I ever did, I, he – it was sold out. And then he made a post on the event page and was like, I'm going camping for the next 48 hours. I can't shut off the code to sign up. So if you sign up, you'll be allowed to do it. Uh, so I'll see you guys in 48 hours. And then, you know, you get 10, 15 more signups. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, this, may, this may be a dumb question, but um, what are you going to DM them through? Like when they comment, can you DM on YouTube? I've honestly never done that. No, I'll just comment back. If I if okay. I don't if I can't find their Instagram. Okay. That's I'll what just, I was asking. I'll I'll just comment back. What people should be expecting yeah. you to reach out to them through. Yeah. It'll be if I if I can find your Instagram right from your name. If not, just put your email address. I can just email you the code too. That's a really good question. That was a really good question. Um, so if you don't, ha you can comment below like bow the bridge and you can just comment your Instagram handle or, your, uh, or your email, whatever you want the links or whatever you want the code sent to, but the code will expire on 11, 28, just so you guys know. So get going, get us some subscribers. We appreciate it. Three, two, one, go.
go right now and yeah. make make your training partners and your other friends go. Also, Just don't do drop it. out. Yeah, don't drop out. You'll regret it. Drop Just think out. about it. Think about it in like 17 years when this is like, like damn, I dropped the regionals. Out I dropped out of the first ever <laughs> Battle of the Bridge. And now freaking, you know, all these people are there and they're giving away ten thousand dollars and all this stuff. So yeah, 17 years and Bubba Pritchett's competing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, also, don't worry, we'll have a, a booth there for uh, autographs before and after now that we're famous. Live podcast? That's all I'm saying. I think afterwards it's going to be a live pod. Maybe during, I don't know. No, not during. I'm going to be a little busy. I, I have an idea for it. We can talk about that later. <laughs> all right. Big teaser. <laughs> um, Dante, how was OSG? I thoroughly enjoyed OSG. Yeah. Like being a spectator, you know. I didn't know what to expect. I never really saw OSG before. So this is my first year strongman. So going there, it was it was just awesome to see a bunch of different international athletes, you know, compete alongside, you know, national American athletes. Um, I really didn't know what to expect from that. I mean, there's like people from Zambia there and Norway. Um, overall, it just, just really fired me up too. You know, being able to literally just walk around the venue and see like Mark Felix or Big Z just like standing next to you. I'm not saying I was fanboying over him, but it's just like cool to see people in real life. Was yeah, there dude, was there anybody that sh- that truly starstruck you when you saw them? You were just like, I don't know. Some of the girls really starstruck me because I don't know. It's just like the one girl Inez. She was like the her log was like so I forget the weight, but it was like 11 reps, and it just blew everyone else out the water. A couple other people were like that. Just you know, just seeing these big athletes compete in person, just something else especially that master's class that master's class is pretty stacked 40 plus yeah the 40 plus shout out to ken yeah yeah shout out to ken like uh, he was he was so mad if he doesn't if he doesn't get a chance at world's strongest man i think that's wild yeah he was in sixth place at the day one and he came back in the second place second place to big z who I think could probably still be a pretty decent world strongest man guy if he locked back into it, um, and can beat Jerry Pritchett, who competes at world strongest man, and Mark Felix, and Mark Felix. Yeah, there's a couple like, there. Dimitar Servatinov or whatever. He came back. I, he came yeah. off the radar for a little bit, and he was blowing it up day one and two, but he kind of fell off on day three and end of day two. Yeah, that class was insane. And Middle middleweights are pretty good too. I think every class, like it's 80 kilos, world's strongest man, like middleweights. I mean, open everyone. There was some crazy, you see some crazy performances. And I think they really like OSG. They really try to like make it as cool as possible for the spectators, but also the athletes. Like you have like an actual car you're walking with. And like, I thought that was cool. The I, will, I will say though, that it did take quite a lot of time to get through every event. Especially day one and two. Like day two didn't end until like I don't remember like seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. Yeah. And so like if you're like an open heavyweight, you go last and you're pretty much there like like what ten in the morning or whatnot, it's a long day. Right. Yeah. So I would like to see maybe kind of faster transitions in the future, but you know, I'm just an amateur, so I really know I have no say, but I feel like a lot of people can benefit from you know positive and criti- critical feedback towards this to improve the show in the future. Yeah, it's yeah, constructive sure. criticism. It's not meant to put anybody down. That's all. Yeah, so, I think. Uh, I think I, Lynn Morehouse was the one who put it on, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need yeah. to take some notes from uh, the ghoul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that deadlift ladder was cool. I think that's always. I think that's kind of like a staple of OSG now. Like that's a really cool deadlift ladder. In the mammoth part at the end, really screwed people up, especially like you can tell like. I heard people in the background talking. I forget who it was, but like saying, man, you're going to pull it and it's going to pull before the weight comes off. Don't let it throw you off. And you could tell it threw a lot of people off. Yeah. Well, it's also heavy as hell. Yeah. Had that after, like, was that an addition after the initial announcement of the events? I think so. No, I think, I think they announced it pretty far out from the show. I might be wrong about that, but it might not have been an original announcement, but I'm pretty sure they gave athletes like ample time because I saw a bunch of people that were doing OSG using a mammoth bar to pray. Okay. Okay. Because last year, so I think, so the last OSG, they didn't have a mammoth bar. They just had the deadlift ladder with deadlift bars. This year they added the mammoth bar to the end. 
and it was heavy. It was heavy. It was almost heavy. seven. It was almost seven hundred for the lightweights. Right. Yeah. After you, doing, you could tell people that just like blown through the regular bar and then came to the mammoth bar and people were, you know, really took their time, got the straps off the arms and really just locked it in. Sure. Yeah. The ninety kg guys, there was a tie after how many events is it in three days? Six, two each day. Two each day. Yeah, and then if you make it to the final top ten, then you can go to day three. Yeah. So with three days, it's six events. Yeah. So the 90 kgs had Uncle Nick, who is uh he's I'm trying to explain him. He's not like a YouTuber himself, but Brian Alzru, he was like in his crew for a long time. He just crazy strong dude. And uh and Nick O'Hare, they exactly tied after six events for the 90 kilo championship. <laughs> and then, but Uncle Nick finished the stones he got farther on the stones and that was the tiebreaker so he won that's heartbreaking man to come in second like that that's heartbreaking i would almost almost like to see at a at another event do you have any thoughts on that because i don't yeah there were a couple ties if it's but if it's for first place or if it's for podium like if it's a tie for ninth like okay but i mean i guess it's easier said than done and i'm not running this level show like that's a huge show that's yeah. probably the biggest show yeah. on it damn sure so like but i would just love to see like a t- actual tiebreaker where the dudes go head to head like i think that would be so it just i don't know it would just leave such a sour taste in my mouth but i mean it's a lot easier said done said Perfect. than done from my chair i'm in right now yeah. um and done there's plenty of room to improve on that too. I, like you said, I think a tiebreaker would have been more interesting to see, especially for like the top three athletes, because there were some people that are competing for third place, and you know, I don't how do, they only have like one third place trophy, right? They only do they split that, or like how did that work? I went down to stones. Okay, so that did go down. To yeah, it was okay. stones was the tiebreaker for everything. I'm thinking so, about how exciting that would be for the audience too, for the spectator. Yeah, what we've been talking about really exciting, but I guess. I mean, I guess like if they announce it like in the rules meeting or whatever, like hey, Stones is our tiebreaker. Like you already know, yeah. Like you are, like you know, you gotta. I mean, it's not like anyone's like in their intellectually like oh, I'm gonna go slow on Stones. But I guess like if they announce it, you you know that it's all or nothing on Stones. It's the last event of the weekend anyway, so it does make sense. It makes more sense than a random event from the weekend. It's the last one. Stones are kind of the king. Um. So it's kind of cool, but I would just love to see, like, especially it's such a unique situation where two guys tie after three freaking days for first place overall. That would just suck so bad to have a worse split time on a stone or not. You know, that guy's just better at stones. Mm -hmm. So it kind of stinks. But uh, like I said, way easier said than done. Some type of like sudden death of that would be sweet. Yeah. Like just have them go, have them both grab stones. And load them back and forth, <laughs> like you and like, Frank. Yeah, like they, like they do. Like they do at World. <laughs> yeah, they do it at World's Youngest Man for the two and three seed to go to the finals. So. And that sucks because yeah. eventually people are but, just going to break after that, and yeah. it's going to be really hyped. It just, but like I said, it is a unique situation with first place. It's first yeah. place, All right? So that's hard. You know what I absolutely hate is when it's and this is like at the local level when there's a tie and it gives a count back to body weight. Like that's stupid. That is stupid because you're signing up to compete in a weight class. You're not midweight. The weight class isn't, oh, you don't get extra points because I weighed in at 180.1 and someone else weighed in at 179.8. Like, are they stronger than me because they're literally 0.4 pounds lighter than me? Just because I didn't take a piss or I didn't take my sandals off when I got on the scale. Like that needs to be made. I think for like a local level thing that needs to be made clear. I think I just don't I don't know. I just don't see why you can't have a sixth event as a tiebreaker. If it's a tiebreaker for a podium position, that's what my thoughts. And, and especially on the last day when there's only 10 athletes per class compared to like however many there were before. Like you're not it's not really pu- pushing time further than But know, it's like, first but it's first place too. Yeah, but it's first place. I'm just saying that's, you're not you're, you're there shorter time on day 3 yeah, so it's right. not like you're pushed for time. Yeah, but 
but I just, I don't know. I, I hate that at the local level, like account back for body weight. Like that just, that just kind of rubs me wrong. I mean, we're talking about making it a spectator sport that, that I mean, that's what more, what more right. for spectators and something like that. Like, for like how cool place, is like it? this, this decides that this is all or nothing. Right. They got to go balls on the wall. Like, think about it. Think about it. Battle of the bridge, right? We have an awesome day, five events. We have these big trophies that the open men and women are going to win if they win, like these awesome awards, right? And two guys tied for first place. After five events, these guys travel, they paid the meat fee, everything, and they get there. And I say in the world, in the in the awards, okay, who weighed like who was weighed less? That's stupid. How cool would it be with hundreds of people there to put these two guys in the middle of the stage? And have them do something back and forth, and you have every you have every spectator and every competitor standing around them and cheering them on and seeing that. How many more people is that going to interest in the sport? And it yep. takes four minutes. It takes four minutes. Yep. Like, dude, go grab a beer at the bar at Thursdays and come watch this, dude. We're about to have a freaking throwdown. We'll like, go nuts. That was a great point, Riley. It's a spectator show. Doing like, like a doing like a hold, I think would be pretty cool. Like a head to head hold. Like yeah, I mean, there's where so they're just like staring at each other. The yeah, limit, it's endless, endless I'm, opportunities. I'm picturing an I go, you go deadlift. Like I go, you go, I go, you go, and you got like, like eight seconds to complete it or something like that. Bro, well, you remember shit talking back and forth too? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. you remember uh, strength for autism? There was. The there was a tie with the girls, open mm-hmm. women, and they did a you go, I go block press. Yep. And that was electric. Yeah. Like, that was electric. Mm-hmm. They had a block the way to everybody circulate. was there watching it at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone, every competitor and spectator is there going nuts. Because like, it's like different. Like when you're watching the show, you're going there to see a specific person, usually, or a couple people. Like you're going, you're not seeing everybody, you're going around watching them the whole time. But then you have everybody that's there for their specific person still watching those two at the end. Everybody right. comes together and watches that. Yeah, it's awesome. So be prepared for that if you signed up for Battle Oh, there will be a – There's there going to be something. Be, <laughs> if especially if it's for a podium spot. Like, nope. yeah. dude. Also, I if, mean, you're, if you're super competitive and, like, obviously if you win by being lighter, like, you'll take the win. But do you really want to win like that? Right. If you're super you wanna, competitive, you're like, I, I want to know I beat you. Right. Great point. There's not, there's not anyone that is a good competitor that would get mad because they were lighter in the yep. same weight class. Like that is stupid. That is stupid. So there will be tiebreakers at our events. Let's go. There will be, and it'll be something on the main like concert stage. So everyone can watch. So I want to, I want to do as many of the events at battle at the bridge on the stage but there's some i can't do yeah because like it's a wooden stage like i can't do the mac i can't do the deadlift because we'll break the stage Hercules will like, be pretty cool but uh axel will be like axel clean and press max because we'll have drop pads like we'll be able to do that on the stage i believe um so yeah we'll, we'll have what we can on there uh but we'll see so that's another thing. I changed the axle at um, at Battle of the Bridge to a max. La- not a max, a last man standing. So instead of max reps, it's going to be uh, a starting weight for each weight class. And once you jump in, you can't jump out. So you can, Riley, you're going to be in the novice class, whether there's going to be um, – that's another thing I want to say. I, I know I'm backtracking, whatever, back to the show. But there's going to be other subcategories added. Like once we have enough novice men or enough novice women, I'll split that into two. I don't know what I'll split it, what weight I'll split it at yet, but I'm going to split that into two, like lightweight and heavyweight. That will have two novice classes, just so you know if there's any novices that are signing up. It won't be like it won't be like a 170 pound dude with the 400 pound novice like it'll be a little bit of a split probably around 200 or 220 or something like that um but so probably 231 actually that would make the probably the most sense in my head because that's middleweight uh but anyway i don't think about it but um so once like riley your class you guys will start you know say a 180 axle and it's in 20 pound jumps every jump 
it goes up. Once you take your first jump, you have to stay in until you miss. Unlimited attempts, but you have to stay in until it's last man stand. And what do you say the jumps are? Obviously, it's depending on it's, class. It's going to be depending. It's TBD. Yeah. I have. I hope to have everything with the weight matrix besides Hercules hole because I don't have it yet. I can't announce what that'll be, but I hope to have all the weights, um, uh, up on Iron Podium uh, by the end of this weekend. So actually, they should. If you're listening to this now, they should be up or up within the next day. Uh, the yoke, the yoke will be heavy. Like the yoke's only going to be 50 feet, so it's going to be heavy. That will be the heavy, probably the heaviest event um, for all competitors. Because I don't want it to be like, okay, five seconds, six seconds, six seconds, four seconds. You know, like I, mm-hmm. 50 feet isn't that long. So it's going to be, there's unlimited drops with it. So it's going to be heavy though. I don't know if you mentioned this, but for the, for the axle, like what's the, what's the breaking point? Like for like a, at an attempt, like. Do you get 30, a certain amount of time? 30 seconds? 30 is that seconds. what you said? Okay. Yep, 30 seconds. Couldn't remember if you said um, that or not. Like, I didn't know if it was like a, if you get it to your shoulders and you drop it, you're done or something like that. I think uh, the yoke we're going to have for the men is going to be a big monster yoke. So it's going to be like a really shiny one that my boy Mike's got, and he's going to bring it out for the show. So, uh, Mike King? Yeah. Mike. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah it'll be uh it, it'll be awesome we've got the frame deadlift it looks like a bridge you know i can just go on and on talking about the show because i'm excited um but we got another show to talk about too so kind of save this kind of save this for the end yeah. for our, so if you're new to the show we we uh, own a gym called 580 barbell uh we train there We have our in-house Christmas party show, 580 Strongest, on December 11th. Um, It's $20 for members to sign up. If you're interested in coming out and just watching or helping us, feel free. Just reach out. That's fine. And also, something we didn't cover on our 580 Strongest episode, you can just buy a shirt for $20. If you're not competing, you can just buy a shirt for $20, and I'll have it. Um, So, yeah, definitely do that if you want to rep the event and – kind of have a cool piece of swag at the at the event um but we only have a few people signed up right now um i'm hoping in the next week to get a lot more engagement i it's on me i had i had so much going on this week that i haven't really got to push it that hard but next week we're gonna really push the heck out of it make it an awesome day for our competitors that want to come out and either try strongman or they're already strongman competitors and they just want to compete um but yeah what what's, the de- what's the deadline again to sign up? December 1st. Um, so a couple things. The log is going to be a max. Easy. Atlas Stone is last man standing. It's as heavy as you can go. It's a max deadlift. The only thing that is going to need weight is the medley. And I'm thinking about making a couple small changes to the medley, right. like making it a yoke down and then take sandbags, have it like a sandbag carry after the yoke. Cause we have so many sandbags. I want to use them. I think that's a good event for people to not get hurt, but learn like a traditional hard medley for, for what it's going to look like. So I'm thinking yoke down and then two or three sandbags after. And, and load you have, it over. Yeah, you got to load it over. So it's kind of a little strategical because you get to pick your yoke height. Yeah. But do you want to pick it low because it'll be easier for the load, but it'll be harder for the yoke here? Yeah. So what do you guys think about that? I like it. Yeah, I can get with that. It makes it, I feel like it makes it just for a better day overall, especially for the new people and they can get to see like, uh, yeah, I feel like more you experienced want to be people. As simple and, as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, yeah, we were a little gung ho when we first made the events yeah. a little bit. So yeah. we got a little excited. Well, I think, I think we're realizing like, it's, it's kind of hard. Like typically when you put a show out, like Josh, put it puts out battle of the bridge, you put out the events, you put out the event weights and you go, you can either do it or you can't, but like, we're trying to cater this show to people that have never really tasted strongman before. Right. So like, okay, we need to be able to make these weights for, for a large group of people, but the, the people are on such different levels that in, in accordance with strength, it's like, okay, 
if we can just do three maxes and then figure out a medley on how that to, on uh, to make that work for that diverse group of people, that that's the best way that we can give a taste for strongman. So yeah. like it's challenging so, to put out a good weight matrix for right. Everybody. So I'm, I'm torn. Like so obviously, like for all and I talked about it. That's why we're doing like the maxes. We're not trying to have like a crazy static show, but for who we're catering to, it helps us the best because it allows us to even have like teaching moments, like someone that's literally, it's like their third time doing a log. They're a new member. They're like, Hey, I want to do that. Like I want to do 580 strongest. We can literally like on their first attempt, like, yeah, they can muscle it up, but like, Hey, for your second attempt, try to keep your elbows like push forward more and like dip like this. And you know, like we can, that's what I want out of it. I want to grow strongman like for our gym. I want people to do it and be like, oh, that was awesome. Like I can only imagine what a real sanctioned show is going to be like, you know, this allows us to prepare people for that next step and let them know like, oh, hey, I actually do want to compete in strongman. It's a so good where I'm torn is how, how do we define these classes for 580 strongest? Because I'm still torn. Stuff. Stuff. I mean, you just got you got to wait till you see who signs up and then go from there. It's still, by year. So it's so tough. It's so tough. That's, that's why we're that's, saying that's be a big depending factor. Yeah. yeah, that's why we're saying like if you're on the fence about it, please get signed up because yeah. like that's kind of limiting us right now when it comes to planning and organizing. Like the more people that we know. And the more people like we can go, these are the classes. It, it makes that easier. So if you're listening, you're a member and you're considering doing it, please just say, Hey, I'm going to do it. Right. Like let somebody know. What if yeah. we, what if we do sort of like a pro class, like for the experienced competitors and then like an open class for like, you know, the stronger gym members that kind of tab with it, but don't really. And then like a novice for like the real beginners, like maybe something like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, definitely won't call it pro, but like, I'll yeah, that's why I was like, open, quote unquote, open, um, open something and then novice, like, open, inter- open, novice open, and inter- yeah, open, yeah. intermediate or uh, novice, intermediate, and open or something like yeah. that. It really just depends on who signs up, yep, yeah, exactly. Like, it, it really depends, exactly. So, we'll we'll do our best to kind and like. I'm not going to make a million weight classes for like nine people. You know what I mean? Like that's not the goal. So like, don't worry so much about like winning, just, you know, worry about coming and and learning and and doing your best. Everything's going to be achievable for you that day. Yeah. We're going to have a blast and we're not going to be just like, you know, like, yeah, I'm not going to hold anything against anybody's shoulders or, not gonna be bragging and just, it's just gonna we're gonna have fun, we're gonna help each other out, we're gonna grow the sport. That's all. Hundred percent. And that's the other thing too. It's not gonna be the superstar show. It's not gonna be a bunch of people who have competed in strongmen showing off their strengths. That's not what we're after. We're right, after right. the new people and getting them involved and understanding how strongman works. That's the goal. So right. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it, guys. That's all. Oh, me too. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun. Um do you guys have anything else about 5A Strongest? Get, get signed, signed up. up. Yeah. Jinx, soda. Get, get uh, signed up uh, this week, please. It's going to make our life a lot easier. I got a bunch of people I want to message and let them know to sign up. Because I just don't get really in their, Get in their ear. Yeah, I don't think I've really pushed that hard for it yet. So, like I said, it was a chaotic week with the – God, I felt like – this is what Joe Rogan feels like this week, getting swarmed. But can't even go grocery shopping. So that's what People happens. Are, when, I guess that's what happens when I leave for a week, you know. Everything's yeah, are you that, shit. Are you that podcast guy? I'm like, yeah, I am. Please leave, leave my family alone, please. Charged. I'm just trying to be here and have dinner with my family. Oh, God. It's no overwhelming. Better, no better conversation starter than, yeah, I'm on a podcast. Yep. It's facts. That's facts. I mean, we did numbies this week. I'm, I'm literally addicted to numbies. So please, subscribe, share, like, all that stuff. I want to get over. I posted, did I post it on Instagram or where did I post with the 100 subscribers thing? Instagram? I think you did Instagram story. Well, I'm going to give away some merch once we have over 100 subscribers. 
So it'll be like a giveaway. Like you'll have to like comment on a video or something like we're doing with uh, Battle of the Bridge. And then we'll just randomly select someone. It'll be something on our YouTube. Like we'll do a video specifically for the giveaway, but you'll win some 580 barbell merch. Um, you don't have to be local either. You can, it can be anywhere. We'll ship it to you. So um, I don't really, didn't really get any good questions this week. Um, we'll carry them. I posted it late again. That's my fault. Uh, got got done training late. So, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about this week? I think we're good. We got just a lot of stuff in the works, and we're coming for you, Joe Rogan. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, Huge they- announcement coming. Don't do that. Right back. I got you. Man. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't let me get it. I got you, man. I got don't, it. In. I, don't do that, Josh. How did you bring that up last week? You're not going to drop an I, announcement on the biggest podcast. I did bring it up. La- I did bring up that. I wish I could announce it. You know, it's not smart for me to announce. It. <laughs> You're I just know, but I, I also know that I like giving you shit about it. So oh, I, I do. <laughs> and I, and rightfully so I should, I got look. Okay. Some on unfor- some things I didn't foresee happening happened to delay the process. That's on me though. I just got excited and I shouldn't have teased it so early. Sorry for being excited with my friends. Sorry. It's okay. We accept your apology. But some of us do. When this stuff drops, buy it. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Bye, bye, Please. bye. Please, gotta keep the lights on. Bye. And you're gonna you're gonna want to. It's gonna be the best thing ever. Yep. Um, as always, thank you guys for listening. Hopefully, we got a bunch of new uh listeners fans fanatics whatever you want to call them hopefully we didn't push people away yeah let us know who you guys want us to hear on here we're basically the premier strongman podcast now so let us know who you want on here this is where people come to break news we can Uh, basically get anyone we want so just yeah no big deal um but as always follow us on instagram 580 barbell like us on facebook uh please subscribe to the youtube um and you know heck just do it this week and go comment and get 15 dollars off a show um so sign up for battle the bridge just go to iron podium search for it it's up there uh yeah thank you guys yeah yep thank you you guys bye bye follow rally